Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church, and today we're looking at dwelling in the Word. It's Saturday, September 26, and uh, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 18. We're going to continue with our look. I think yesterday, uh, Pastor Joanna Gregg also looked at the passage just prior to this. We're going to look at verses uh, 18 through 24 in Ezekiel chapter 18, but it's good to be with you today. So let's look at this word. Uh, the author writes, Yet you say, Why should not the Son suffer for the iniquity of the Father? When the Son has done what is lawful and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The person who sins shall die. And a child shall not suffer for the iniquity of a parent or a parent suffer for the iniquity of a child. The righteousness of the righteous shall be his or her own. And the wickedness shall be their own. But if the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and kept all my statutes and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them for the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity and do not do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live. None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin that they have committed, they shall die. They shall die. So uh, as we dwell on this passage and as we hear it uh, out loud, what jumps out at you and maybe what... Uh, Questions might this passage raise for you, and what nudge might you feel from God as you walk your life today in this world? Um, so when I read this passage, I think the, the part that jumps out at me is, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? It jumped out at me because it feels like this is what God is saying about God's heart doesn't wish ill on anybody. In fact, um, maybe like a parent, only wanting their child to do well, to, to not struggle so much, but to succeed. But also knowing that life is tough and that there are going to be some bad decisions as well as good decisions. And these are called life lessons. Um, but that jumped out at me, that God doesn't have pleasure in seeing the bad things happen, but only wants good. Even when you've done bad, you've got an opportunity. So as I, I thought about this passage, it made me think about uh, a younger time in my life when I would walk uh, or hike on the Appalachian Trail and camp. Um, you know, just try to, to hike the Appalachian Trail without a guidebook, and you'll not only miss out um, on some of the wonderful comments that other people put in there or the ways that they tell you what to look for, like water and also vistas uh, and shortcuts and things like that, but um, you might get lost if you don't have it. You know, I know the trail is, is blazed with a certain kind of a, a, a marker along the way, but sometimes nature happens and uh, disasters tear down trees and you, lose, you can lose sight of where you are. Um, and the book might be a few years old. Um, but I've been both lost on the Appalachian Trail, which is a very humbling experience and kind of um, scary, and found my way back onto the trail, which is a very joyful experience. And I've been able to utilize the insights of others who've gone before me to help even enhance or intensify my experience of the trail. Maybe that's a good metaphor too, but you know, um, what I'm hearing today is just as the bad can repent or change and be transformed into a new way of life, the good can also rebel and digress into a worthless way. And so it's all about being in the present. It's all about being on the right path and just following it one step at a time. Um, Thomas Merton was a Trappist monk that had a lot of beautiful insights to life and faith and used to talk about this understanding of a life of faith, um, saying that, you know, the past is really behind us and the future, well, that's ahead of us. It's kind of far away. And all we have then is the present. And it's when we live with God in the present 
that life begins to happen and that our future gets formed in the present moment. So don't worry about the future. That God's in the present and we're to embrace God there. In fact, this is how he put it. I found a quote of his. You do not need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is all go- where it is all going. What you need is to recognize the possibilities and challenges offered by the present moment and to embrace them with courage and faith and hope. He believed that the life of faith and the journey of a spirit uh, were centered on the two questions uh, of who I am and who is God. And he said they're like two sides of the same coin, that who we are is inseparable from God. And when we try to figure out our life without God, we become a little lopsided. And so we do, as a people of faith, think about what Jesus taught. And he taught a lot about this in parables. You know, like God is like the father in the parable of the prodigal son uh, who welcomes the son back even after the son went on his own way. Or in actions that Jesus had with his disciples, you know, Peter, after the resurrection, and he meets him on the beach and he instructs him, hey, do you love me? And he goes, yeah, well, feed my sheep. Um, This is all about God, and we are connected. Our our identity is connected to that kind of God. So as we struggle with learning um, about who we are, which is a creation of God's, the world is also busy trying to confuse our thinking and even stunt our spiritual growth. And, and it happens through options that we have, or in biblical terms, you know, temptations that are out there. Um, we live in times as humanity has since the beginning of time, when God's gift of the way of life is challenged by other ways of living, which can end up being not so fulfilling. Um, and in our story, I guess, Israel has given into temptations to other ways through its... Um, including, um, I guess, its allegiance to other gods, not just to God. And no one seems to be listening. Um, The rebellious hearts now are refusing God's way. And even after warnings, um, what we find in the book of Ezekiel is that Israel is going to be taken over and the temple is going to be destroyed. This is a little bit later on than our verse today. But we see it happening in chapter 33. And then we realize that as a result of their waywardness and being exiled, a transformation will take place. And, and it talks about how their hard hearts, which turn them away from God, are now going to become soft, which will allow God to live in with them. And then there's this wonderful image in 37, chapter 37, about the Valley of Dry Bones and how that people who've gone and lost their way are like dry bones, but God will provide new sinew and flesh and muscle and bring them back to life. Um, and so I think as we're hearing in yesterday's and even today's verses of Ezekiel 18, there are right, right, right ways given to us by God where we become righteous. And there are other ways, um, that are out there that we might consider self-righteous. We try to make ourselves better that are offered by the world. Um, the gospels that we hear have the struggle, how the devil, you know, tempts with worldly power. Uh, If only we give allegiance and go against God, we can have everything. That's what Jesus was tempted with. Um, But in the parables, we hear Jesus as a rabbi, a teacher, a Messiah, about how true life comes through God's way, which is loving service and mercy and justice. And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And it was also the way of the cross. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. My peace, uh, don't give as I don't give as the world gives, but I give a peaceful way. So you know, it's been said that um, that happiness and even its cousin joy is generated by external sources, you know, around us. You know, like you win the lottery and you're happy, or things happen to you and you're happy or joyful. And this is what some people have called a, a contingent emotion. It's contingent upon an external force. But that peace, God's peace, is different. It's a confidence, assurance of the one who's greater than all others so that we are unaffected by outward circumstances. And so they call it a non-contingent. And so we can have peace regardless of what's happening around us, like the world collapsing or like a pandemic. Um, 
And it's the result of spiritual growth and formation. And that's what God wants for us, to be made whole on the inside. I love the story. There was an Amish man who looked out his farmhouse, wanted to see a, a moving van pulling up next door. Um, and clearly his neighbors weren't going to be Amish. They were from the city. And um, he was thinking, wow, look at that hoard of things that these movers are bringing in, box after box of thing after thing, material items filled with items like TVs and, and stereos even a hot tub, ready to be installed in the backyard. Um, and after introducing himself, the Amish man said to his neighbor, uh, don't be shy now. If you need any help with any of your appliances, just call on me. And the neighbor said, hey, I'm kind of surprised you know about these things. Um, and the farmer just said, well, I don't, but I can show you how to live without them. You know, today's verse from Ezekiel is about God's way and how there are two roads or ways to live, God's way and not God's way. And it leads to um, continued life for those who follow even and even new life for those who haven't been following. But either way, God's way is offered by grace and it gives us that sense of peace. So blessings as you dwell on this passage today. Let us pray. Grace and peace, God, we give you thanks that you provide in our daily life. So bless us today as we walk your walk. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, have a great day.